Hey everyone, uh, welcome to week five, day one. So for this week, what we're gonna do is try to do portraits uh, in a way that they're usually not presented to us. We usually see uh, faces go uh, like full frontal poses or three quarter view. We're gonna try to turn the face away from us or find ways in which the uh, portrait is actually not presented to us, you know, in a very direct way. So how do we make paintings work? How do we make portraits work when they're actually, you know, facing away from us and, and not, you know, wanting to engage with us? That's gonna be the challenge for this week. So let's see how we do. And by the way, we made it past our first month. So <laughs> that was a lot of videos. We're gonna do a lot more. Thank you for uh, being with us for this first month. We'll see how many months we can go, but our plan is two years and we're committed to that. So we'll see how we do in this second month. But uh, welcome, week five, day one, bye. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, for this first painting, I thought I would do something simple, nice, elegant, but very, very simple. And it was a good way to kind of uh, test the waters a little bit for me also during the week. So, so for this, you know, look away uh, week, I wanted to do not quite a, um, I wanted to do a portrait, but I, I, I didn't want to do a profile. Uh, and I have this kind of qualm with profiles because I love them. I think they are, there are fantastic paintings that are profiles. I, I never understood them as simpler than doing a three quarter uh, view of a head or a frontal view of a head. Those are far more traditional and I can understand why. But I, I, for the life of me, I just could never understand why they were almost like shunned upon. Like doing a profile was even cheaper for a painter. You know, when you were commissioning a portrait, if, and even today, this is true, even today, I know tons of portrait painters and they discriminate their prices. And if they do portraits, you know, it's a, a frontal portrait is going to be uh, more expensive than a profile. And for me, it's just so arbitrary that, you know, why? Just because you have to do, you know, one eye instead of, uh, of two uh, or just one nostril, one corner of the mouth. Um, I even think that a profile is a, it's just a, a very, very difficult uh, painting to pull off because you have this kind of concept of a portrait that feels very two-dimensional. It really, really feels flat, but you have to convey three-dimensionality. You have to. A flat profile is not a great, I mean, I don't wanna sound absolutist, like I'm sure there's fl very flat, uh, great looking uh, uh, profile portraits. But you know, if you were painting in a naturalistic way, you, you want to speak about atmosphere. You want to speak about that head, you know, in a space and going around uh, that space. And, and that to me is super, super, super difficult. It requires like edge work, like crazy. I think uh, Dennis Miller Bunker has probably, I would even say better than Madame X, to be totally honest, is one of the best um, profile paintings I've ever seen. Uh, but I wanted to do something different because this week is about acknowledging, yes, that you're doing a portrait, but not relying upon, you know, the way we usually understand portraits, that they have to engage the observer, that they have to be, you know, you always have to be uh, conscious of where the sitter's eyes are looking at. Um, no, I wanted to kind of investigate that if we try to yes participate with you know the model we're portraying uh in a relationship where the model is actually turning away from us i thought or we see very very little of their face uh, i thought that was cool i thought that was very very cool and i wanted to see if i could you know find ways to try and solve that i'm, I'm sure there's you know, countless of ways to try and solve that. But, uh, you know, for this week, this is going to be five. I'm going to have to do, you know, my uh, <laughs> my exercise is going to be uh, trying to find five very distinct different ways to try and solve that. So one of the things that I've always loved, and this goes back to a, a Mooka drawing of Sarah Bernhardt, I love heads that are turning away from you. That pose that 
the ear is actually turning a little bit away so you can see the uh, inner part, the back part of the ear that actually connects to the uh, skull. I, I want to see that. Like I want to see uh, these very, very subtle changes um, during this week that are sometimes very uncomfortable because it's not that they're hard to draw. It's just that we're not used to looking and engaging with people in that way, when, when you talk to somebody, you're looking at them, hopefully. Um, so when you see somebody turning away, but you still want to have, again, like a relationship. That's why I was trying to say at the beginning, yeah, I want to paint somebody that feels like they kind of know that I'm painting them, but they're still kind of shying away. They're turning away. You know, that's what we're trying to do with this look away. Um, and it's very, very interesting to just understand those heads as portraits and what's cool is that I actually feel that when that head act turns away it activates a ton of the space you know it makes you kind of imagine that they're looking at something they're decidedly not looking at you but they're looking at you know this inner world um, that you don't have access to uh, within the painting so I, I actually think that that's super cool now uh, you've heard me say before that, you know, th there is no difficult thing to draw or paint. I really still believe that. I think that everything requires the same amount of concentration. Everything is as difficult as, you know, the other thing. Any one thing is as difficult to paint as the other thing. Um, but, <laughs> and this is very, very, very true for today. I wanted to push character in this painting today. I really, really, I've painted Danny many times. I've drawn her many, many times. I think I could paint and draw her with my eyes closed. I love all her shapes. I absolutely know them by heart. So I love to try and push certain things that I think emphasize their character. And I was trying to do that today. And it's not just because a lot of people, I think shorthand you know, what, um, I don't know if exactly what I'm trying to do, but when you try to do those sort of things, they shorthand it as, as caricature and they say caricature as if it was like a lower form of art. And I just totally don't see that. Honestly, it, you know, I've, I've seen, for example, Jack Levine's paintings and David Levine's paintings, and there's nothing, nothing in them that would make me believe that they're lesser paintings that they're not as serious as other more quote-unquote serious painters or painters that are taken more seriously. I, I just don't believe that. Um, early Freud is very, very, very character-driven. You know, Freud was never, ever, ever afraid to just take a chance and say, wow, this, you know, this dude feels, you know, like a, he has an elongated face or it feels very asymmetrical. Um, and he pushed it. He really, really explored the limits of trying to maintain a likeness or a feeling of that person while pushing like all these different characteristics that Freud thought made that person feel specifically like that person. So I, I actually love that. I'm not at all afraid of it. But I've had people over the years constantly just tell me like, wow, th they feel this is like a lesser attempt at drawing or painting. Like they really believe that there are more elegant ways of solving a portrait. Uh, I don't. Whenever I hear people say that, I always tell people, well, what I'm hearing is that you wouldn't do it. That's what I'm hearing. But in no way I'm going to interpret what you're saying as something that I should be doing. You know, if, if anything, those people that tell those things to me, they are the ones that should be learning about themselves while they speak those things. But not me. I am absolutely certain of what I'm doing. I know exactly why I'm trying to push character. I know how much I enjoy it. Again, I come from an illustrator background. So for me, it's like Albert Dorn. Uh, <laughs> I absolutely love illustrators like that. They're 100% character. Now what you're going to see here, and this is awesome that this happens to me, I was very, very happy that it started happening, is that I get frustrated. I started, I thought I had this head, I thought, and this is like I was walking a very, very delicate line, and I was being mindful of it while I was painting, but I don't think I acknowledged how very delicate, how fragile this little line was for this kind of three quarters looking away from you portrait. 
And in a lot of the things, a lot of the features, there's a ton of information happening in such a small space that if I mess up, like I thought I did right there, it's so frustrating that I just have to scrape and start over again because it's very, very frustrating. And I started noticing something that was very cool and it was that my painting couldn't have almost like two hemispheres where there was the same amount of tension um, asking for the viewer's attention or for my attention while I was painting it. I realized that because I was trying to you know, pay so much attention to the drawing that was on the feature side of the face, you know, the, the eye that was looking away, that nose that was turning away, that little bit of the uh, upper lip, and that tiny little bit of the uh, bottom lip that came from underneath the upper lip and kind of tucked in underneath the uh, upper lip and it was coming around. There was so much stuff happening in such little space and I was paying so, so much attention to it and trying to make it so, so particular that I felt that those moments in the painting, and it's a very narrow, narrow um, moment of the painting, it's like a narrow street, they were just begging for attention that I just wasn't kind of willing to give because I thought my painting actually was happening on the left side of the painting. I love that bun that was tying her hair like in the back. Uh, I love that ear. I thought that was great. And that kind of very stiff neck again, that's a very Danny thing. I was like, yeah, that's where my painting is. My painting is not on the opposite side of the face, even though we usually understand those moments as the ones that give identity to our sitter. So I was just, you know, struggling to understand how much I should put. And again, this was a very, very fragile thing. There were moments in the painting where I was like, okay, I think I have it. Like, I got it. Like, okay, I, I, I'm in the right track. And then suddenly, a tiny little stroke, and we've all been there. We all know how that feels. Like, And just the tiniest of marks, and it's gone. And we ruined it. Yeah, We were not paying attention for just a split second, and it was ruined. And for me, it's tough because I... I also know what I'm trying to get from Danny, from, you know, this depiction of Danny. And because I know I know her, you know, and she's so close to my heart that I just don't want to make a face. I just don't want to make a head. And then, no, I, there, there's a curvature to her nose. There's like a little slope, like a little slide to her nose that feels so strange, but is so subtle and beautiful. That's why I was repainting that contour constantly because I was like, I don't have it. I don't have that. That little moment that makes her nose feel like she's got like this pixie look like. It's a very sharp, sharp nose that ends up like in a little point. It's, it, it's, it's so, so particular, but I know it again by heart that I just wasn't willing to sacrifice it. And, um, and I, I, I was glad it happened. I mean, I'm not glad I, I don't like paintings like this because you are struggling and I am conscious of the, of the fact that I'm struggling. And if you've been there, you know that this is a terrible place to be where you know you're not making good decisions and you know that drawing is kicking your butt and you try it and you do the same mistakes all over again and you try it again and you do the same mistakes or you do new mistakes and nothing seems to work. And for me, as with many of us, sometimes you just have to say, okay, it's late night or it's late afternoon. I'm just going to pack it up. Just, you know, go home. Just, you know, take a breather, go outside, just walk. Or I need a good night's sleep. And tomorrow I'll come with fresh eyes and I'll just, I'll really hit it. I'll get it and I'll understand it and I'll be able to solve it. Um, but I can't afford that right now. Part of what we're doing now is we are putting ourselves against an act that requires you to be on and requires you to try and understand why you're deviating from a path that you had set for yourself. And it's all happening in this one sitting. So it's very, very tough. I'm, I'm never going to lie to you. Like, it's always tough. Every time I'm sitting down to paint, I'm scared. I'm horrified. Every single time I start a painting, I'm like, okay, this one's going to suck. I'm sure, I'm sure this is going to be terrible. 
uh, because it never gets easy. It really never does. And I've actually come to accept that kind of nervousness that you have when you start a painting. And I've learned how to live with it. And I think that's the most important thing. But, but you know, I, I am not confident at all. I don't think painters should ever feel confident because, you know, you blink and nature goes like, yeah, 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 you don't know how to paint. You don't really understand this. You're not that good. Uh, so it, it just requires so much of us and it drains so much of your energy that, that I always tell myself, okay, this is the better effort that I can do for today. This is going to be, you know, it, it's always going to be a losing effort, but this is, this is the best that I can do in this losing effort. <laughs> and today it, it was a lot about that. I think I was able by the end, uh, if I kept going, and I would have scraped this 20 times if I had needed to, uh, but I kept going because I felt there was a balance. Uh, there was enough information on the right side that would satisfy me understanding that, yes, that felt like Danny, but it wasn't so powerful that it was um, taking attention away from the left side of the painting where I felt it was the most interesting part of the image. So I, I was very, very satisfied with that. And just so you guys know, I, I always have painters or, or, or specific paintings that are like anchor points that, are, that, that ground me. And while I was doing this, it has to be Dermot Kelly. I hope a lot of you know who Dermot Kelly is. I think he is a tremendous painter and he can just solve the most complex things in the easiest, most elegant ways. It just, it gives you that Velasquez vibe where you see a Velasquez painting and you say, okay, that's not that hard to paint and you can copy a Velasquez painting and you're like, okay, I can kind of get this. But once you see what the <laughs> Velasquez was painting and you try to simplify it like he did, it's impossible. It's, you know, that's an impossible task. And Dermot Kelly kind of has that same vibe. I mean, they very different painters, of course, but, um, but when you see the few color choices that he, he uses to understand his subject matter, you're like, okay, you know, I totally get this. This isn't that bad. Like that hair is like, you know, three colors and that's it it's you know there's nothing strange about it but again once you encounter this from life or from a photo or from you know whatever wherever you're painting from you realize okay this was very very hard so I always in the back of my mind I always use Dermot Kelly as again you know my ground um, ground wire I have him in my head as a reminder just of okay go bigger simpler bigger simpler and that's what it was happening with this one I think the uh, the toughest part of the painting was just acknowledging that yeah this week is about letting go and letting go of the information that I usually understand as uh, indispensable for painting a portrait which is features which are the features and um, and it was about kind of sacrificing those so this was a first step for this new week, for this new month, actually. We're starting a new month. That's super awesome. Um, and it was a great reminder. It was, it was always stay humble, always, always go back to your foundation, always go back to the, uh, the simple rules of painting. And I'm super happy and super glad it happened. And I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm not patting myself on the back, but... You have to do this to yourself too, but I'm happy that I just kept with it and kept going, kept reminding myself what I was looking for, and and I wasn't satisfied easily because I, I there were stages in this painting where I was like, oh, just let it go, just let it go, just you know, uh, nobody's gonna know <laughs> what you're looking for. Just solve it in a very easy way, and that's it. Uh, and I wasn't willing to do that. I, I don't care about how it looks in the video. I'm doing this for myself first. And I, I'm never going to lie to myself. I can't do that when I'm painting. If I lie to myself, you know, people are going to notice it. A painting, I don't think a painting lies. I really, really don't. You can sense when somebody is painting something that doesn't belong to them. So uh, this is about being true to what I intended to do from the beginning. And I, I'm very happy and I, I feel proud that I kept hacking at it. Is it the best solution? I don't know. I don't know. But it's it's the one that I was like, okay, oof, you know, it was like a tough round, but I made it. And that's, you know, the best that I can hope for. And that has always been my mindset, you know, 
it was in my mindset 20 years ago, it's still my mindset. So this is a, always a tough battle. It is almost like a battle you're bound to lose, but you got to give it your all. So I think it was a cool start. I hope you guys like the uh, theme for this week. I think it's a nice, uh, <laughs> nice way to call it. Look away. But uh, we'll see how we do tomorrow. So thank you, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.